We may play different sports, but we all have the same mindset. Passion, commitment, hard work, and a love for the game. We are U of R athletes. And United, United we play. play. The ESIM program is an international sport marketing industry class in Madrid, Spain. So uh, 15 of us from U of R got to go to Madrid, Spain for 10 days and do this program. Studying abroad was everything I expected it to be. It was interesting, meaningful, and of course educational. For me, sport management is all about networking and making connections, and the class on international sport marketing just did that. And I now have the knowledge of international sport marketing and the connections to utilize in my future. My experience was 10 out of 10. It was lots of fun. I'm a human kinetic student, so it's a lot of anatomy and physiology, but it was just nice to learn about my degree in a different country. I would tell someone interested in studying abroad simply to just do it. I now have connections internationally from not just Spain, but people from Finland, Germany, Austria, you name it. I would say don't think about it twice and just hop on because it's a really good experience and you never know what you can get out of it.
The Sport and Recreational Management program at the University of Regina is a four-year bachelor's degree. It's a mixture of kinesiology and business classes with a sport management focus. The Sport and Record Management program was something that was excellent for myself. Policy management, sport law, uh, program development. The classes themselves prepared myself for being where I'm at. As a student, my experience has been incredibly positive with the program. I think what makes the Sport and Rec Management program and the field so interesting is that there's so many opportunities. You can go the professional uh, route, the college athletics route, you can go the community recreation programming, you can go university recreation programming. I've been able to grow the game within the province. I get to work in sport every day. That is the best thing that you can ever do. You really get to tailor this program to your interests as an individual. It really challenged me to be a better person and a better professional. And it's just been the best thing I've ever done. When you grew up playing the sport and then you get a chance to give back and develop it, it's so rewarding in that sense. That brings me the most joy in, in coming to work every day. Whether you want to change the world or nurture your own neighborhood, start here. With a diverse mix of people, cultures, and ideas, our campus is a place of inclusion. Located in the heart of the city. A place where there's always something going on. A place where your professors will get to know you by name. That's the beauty of a small campus community. Connect with open-minded learners, caring professors, and brilliant researchers. Inspire and be inspired by others who share your passion to do something exceptional. Thrive in a supportive and diverse learning environment where your success is celebrated. Create a cinematic masterpiece. Launch a successful startup. Shape young minds. Or find a cure. You're determined to achieve your potential. And we're determined to help you do it. Welcome to the University of Winnipeg. We can't wait to meet you.
It's important because feelings that we have are generally tend to be things that we keep inside of our bodies and being able to express that feeling to someone else may help them identify potential issues. Seeing it in real time being used by people has been an amazing experience and people are engaging with it and see value in it and that makes me feel really good. I chose to take online summer courses because they really worked around my schedule when I was working full-time in the co-op program. I can go log on to the course anytime I want. I don't have to be there at a specific time, so I can watch my lecture anytime during my day that I feel like it. I was able to take some classes that maybe I wouldn't have taken if I was taking them in person. With summer classes, I've been able to work, travel, and study at the same time. We may play different sports, but we all have the same mindset. Passion, commitment, hard work, and a love for the game. We are U of R athletes. And you know we play. The ESIM program is an international sport marketing industry class in Madrid, Spain. So uh, 15 of us from U of R got to go to Madrid, Spain for 10 days and do this program. Studying abroad was everything I expected it to be. It was interesting, meaningful, and of course educational. For me, sport management is all about networking and making connections, and the class on international sport marketing just did that. And I now have the knowledge of international sport marketing and the connections to utilize in my future. My experience was 10 out of 10. It was lots of fun. I'm a human kinetics student, so it's a lot of anatomy and physiology, but it was just nice to learn about my degree in a different country. I would tell someone interested in studying abroad simply to just do it. I now have connections internationally from not just Spain, but people from Finland, Germany, Austria, you name it. I would say don't think about it twice and just hop on because it's a really good experience and you never know what you can get out of it. The Sport and Recreational Management program at the University of Regina is a four-year bachelor's degree. It's a mixture of kinesiology and business classes with a sport management focus. The Sport and Record Management program was something that was excellent for myself. 
policy management, sport law, uh, program development. The classes themselves prepared myself for being where I'm at. As a student, my experience has been incredibly positive with the program. I think what makes the sport and rec management program and the field so interesting is that there's so many opportunities. You can go the professional uh, route, the college athletics route, you can go the community recreation programming, you can go university recreation programming. I've been able to grow the game within the province. I get to work in sport every day. That is the best thing that you can ever do. You really get to tailor this program to your interests as an individual. It really challenged me to be a better person and a better professional. And it's just been the best thing I've ever done. When you grew up playing the sport and then you get a chance to give back and develop it, it's so rewarding in that sense. That brings me the most joy in, in coming to work every day. Hello and welcome to the University of Regina. We have preseason U Sports and Canada West action between the University of Regina Cougars and the visiting University of Winnipeg Westman. We'll get your starting lineups in a second. I'm Adam Hunter alongside me, former Cougar, Megan Pickton, once again on the call. And if you're just tuning in, yes, there's a new court here at the University of Regina with the gold sideline and baseline in the two-tone key and court looking fantastic as we see Hayden Collier and Mikhail Mikhailov taking the jump we'll set your lineups in one second here new look Cougar team three on the way Persad is no good and at his first year Cougar Jordan Persad wearing number three He's joining the starting lineup by number two, Matt Bernard, number four, Ben Camba, number five, Nick Bernard, and starting tonight in the middle, number 15, Hayden Collier. And a nice hook over the shoulder from Mikhailov. Westman starters are Moranit, Alexander, Stewart, Mikhailov and Gordo. Coach of the Westman is Mike Rainbow. Coach of the Cougars, Steve Burrows. Mikhailov deep in the post, gets his own rebound and puts it in. And he's got four quick ones from inside. And Megan, what are you hoping to see from these two teams tonight? Well, it'll be really interesting just to see the play of both these teams. I mean, like you said, Cougars with a different look than last year, so it's just getting used to what their offense is going to look like. And from the West End, they've got two big guys on the inside, so I'm interested to see their post play. Mikhailov for three just rolls out, and he was looking for a 7 0 run, personal 7 0 run there.
Collier inside, fifth year player. Goes for the little hook. Lay-in's no good. Collier from New Zealand. Oh, nice. <laughs> nice dish there. Westman with a team with some Spanish flavor. As they're starting Mikhailov out of Madrid. And Gorda, Gordos, excuse me, from Las Palmas. And very quickly, Coach Rainbow goes to the bench and he'll bring in Emmanuel Thomas, second year guard from Winnipeg. And Ryan Luke, also a second year guard from Winnipeg's John Taylor as Persaud hits the jumper. Nice looking jumper there from that elbow. It's a 6 2 lead for Winnipeg early on. <laughs> Fight inside for it. Bernard loses control. Thomas has it. It's tracked down by the Westman near half court. Three on the way, deep one. And Mikhailov is going to get the dunk. And a turnover here, Gordo finds Luke and one in a tough start for Regina. Bernard commits the foul. He's telling his teammates to calm down. A bit of a rough start here for Regina. Matt Bernard gets called for the foul. You can see the Western really like to push the ball too and they're running through their subs quickly as we see another new Westman enter the game. A rebound for Collier. Nice. Hit ahead to Bernard's going to get the big dunk in transition. And a good run out by Nick Bernard. Really nice push ahead there. 10 4 Winnipeg. As Megan mentioned, another Westman checked into the game there. That's number 12, Elijah Mensa. He has the ball right now inside, kicks it out. Good block. Collier gets the block and another. So a pair of blocks for Collier. And Bernard draws the foul. And of course, Collier for the Cougars sitting at six foot ten. That long reach. I believe that's Luke Harold that's gonna enter the game for the Cougars coming from McEwen University in his fourth year. Luke Carroll, a Regina product. It's Persaud, has it for the Cougars. And just into the game for the first time. That's Edwards. Look inside to Orinze. And Orinze. Renze Maka and Yako draws the foul. Renze at the free throw line, knocks it down. Renze was a key key player for the Cougars last year, playing in that five six man position. Coming off the bench most games, having instant impact. Shot on the baseline is no good. Orenze pulls down the rebound, finds Edwards. Head of steam for Edwards. Finds Persaud in the corner, has got to save it to Harold. Crossover by Renze, right to the basket, draws the foul, he'll shoot two. So, Steve Burles went to his bench, and the three substitutions, Harold, Edwards, and, and Renze have offered a lot of energy. Well, energy and aggression, right? Going straight to the hoop, challenging people on the boards. Cougars 
Another new player into the game for the first time. That's number 13, Drew Ackerman, second year player from Meadow Lake, transfer from Guelph. Renze makes one of two. Renze is fourth year out of Liverpool. That three's on the way, and that is pure for the three point line. Well, just checking into the game is Kato Jaro, first year player out of Winnipeg, and a turnover here. And Winnipeg has a two on one. Mikhailov and lays it off glass. And just like that, 5 0 Winnipeg run. First step by Renze, looks back door, finds Edwards for two. It's a nice job attacking the baseline there from Renze, finding the open man. Mikhailov again, he's been impressive inside. and Easier to see that out of bounds this year <laughs> as we in previous years have had a green key and a green sideline baseline. And ben Campbell returns to the game for the Cougars number four. His first year with Regina. He's played at Nate in Edmonton. Campbell's gonna draw the foul. That's one thing fans of the Cougars will notice this year. Was last year, after losing Ben Hillis, who was the player of the year for the Cougars, they kind of had a point guard by committee. Mm -hmm. And this year they have a few more ball handlers on the team, so interested to see how that shakes out. Of course, the first time, to, first chance to see the Cougars in action this yeah. evening. So far, really good job of recruiting here from that Regina coaching staff, like you mentioned needed to go out and get some ball handlers and, and seems as though they did. Well, a foul on Orinze there, a second Cougar team foul. 15 to nine, Westman lead it. 3.50 to go here in quarter number one. That's no good. Good challenge there by Regina. Edwards has it. We'll push in transition. And they're going to call a foul here to push in transition. You can get bonus on that one as well. Cougars are in bonus. Coach Rainbow asking for the push off. Edwards makes the first free throw. Edwards hits them both. And the Cougars trail by four here. 3.30 to go in quarter number one. Number one, Noah Cancam into the game for the first time for Winnipeg. Also out there. Returning is number nine, Alberto Gordo. And we have Donald Stewart shooting free throws. First one is long. Second is short. Lorenze pulls down the rebound. Head of steam in transition. Goes all the way in off the glass for two. Nice, confident coast to coast finish. It's been a different game here with Lorenze in it. And a nice finish there, soft touch. John Marinan. Crossover <laughs> and the step back. 
Luke Harold. Three on the way from Gordo Ooh. is good. That's a tough shot. Step behind that three-point line. It was too bad because the Cougars were doing some really nice high hedge defense there with Ackerman, not really giving Winnipeg many options. There's a turnover there by Camba. Here comes Gordo the other way. And he lays it in. So an and a one, just like that, Winnipeg can make it a seven point advantage. Gordo at the line. Just hit the three and hit three the old fashioned way. So a quick six for him. And it's 23-15 here for Winnipeg. Two minutes to go here, first quarter. Campbell with it. To the basket, Ooh. tough left-handed finish. Great body control. Nice finish inside there. Mikhailov again. Campbell with it, looking for a teammate. Nice. And Cade Mather with the finish. And that's good little action just off a of flex screen again. Mikhailov is eating right now. Megan's excited <laughs> up here because the <laughs> post player is just cooking. Oh, it's just so nice. You really don't see it much anymore, so it's kind of it's fun to watch. Bernard draws the foul. He'll go to the line. Just into the game for the Cougars for the first time is number zero, Logan Kenny. He's from Nate, teammate of Ben Cambo. They came together, both out of Calgary. Take a look at that drive here from Bernard. Good cutoff. And Weston just a bump at the end on the crossover. Twenty seven twenty. Westman lead it, Gordo with it, wants to take Collier off the dribble and does. Nice rebound by Bernard. Step through and finish for Lodi. Beautiful fast breaking here. Both these teams putting in work in the open court. Fourteen seconds on the game clock. But a two second difference and a nice finish there. Bernard at the buzzer, just short. And after one quarter, up and down, entertaining quarter, Westman lead it 29 22. And that was. Cougars would probably like to see a bit more defense from their squad, Megan, giving up quite a few interior baskets. Two three-pointers made by Winnipeg. 20 points well, in the paint. Yeah, 20 points in the paint is a big one. Good eyes on this. <laughs> it's kind of interesting, though, because that first quarter, to me, didn't feel like a typical preseason game. You saw both teams kind of flying up and down, finishing some really tough shots. It was, it was exciting basketball to kick off this U Sports preseason. I'm still trying to keep up with the new names, new faces on the Regina Cougar team. Yeah, a lot of new faces. 
But yeah, Winnipeg, 20 points in the paint. Regina's 12. So definitely dominating. Well, it's 29-22 Winnipeg. And as Megan talked about, 20 of those points in the paint. Only one free throw made for Winnipeg on four attempts. Cougars are six of eight, so Winnipeg doing a lot of damage inside. Especially it's Mikhailov, he's got 14 already and five rebounds, so I don't know that's gonna jump out uh, on the box score when Coach Burroughs and his coaching staff look at that at halftime. Yeah, and he, he started off really, really hot there and just kind of continued. No defense that the Cougars kind of threw at him. Slowed him down. We'll start the second quarter here. Winnipeg has it. Nice drive inside. Collier again changes the shot. Megan mentioned that 6 10 frame. I'm going to put on the floor the big man. And Winnipeg wanted a push off. They're not going to get the call. Collier finishes it. 29 24. Oof, skying for that rebound. Nice movement off that low post entry. Well, a seven point lead here. Collier, he can step out and shoot it. That's no good. And they'll get a rebound here. And a transition push. It's Jaro. Hit one in the first quarter, and he's got one here in the second. Nice looking confident stroke from the first year player. 34-24. Bernard, for Kenny, can't find him. Really? 10 point lead now. Congested in the key there. Westman had three to four guys kind of in that area to stop the drive. Cougars right now not shooting well from the outside yet to hit a three, so why not pack it into the paint? Stewart took a hit inside. He'll go to the foul line. That's the first Cougar team foul of the quarter. 10 point lead for the visiting Westman. Transition year here a bit for Regina as they graduated a lot of players last year and the year before. A lot of guys have played a ton of minutes. Obviously, Carter Miller, we talked about Ben Hillis earlier. Braden Kuski, who was one of the Cougars' top scorers. Jacques Medal. Uh, could go on. <laughs> Nigel Warden. Yeah, Nigel Warden as well. So, a bit of turnover here for the Cougars. Trying to find a new combination of players, have them gel. The season starting very soon. It's Persaud misses the pull-up jumper. Had one in the first half. First quarter, excuse me, go down a similar spot. Gordo beats his man off the dribble. Mikhailov can't get it to go. And that pass is deflected away. Bit of an errant passer. So we have Asher and Daw who got that deflection. He's into the game number nine. It was with the Cougars last season. And out there in the mask is number seven, Zach Hillis, redshirted last season. Prasad wants to get that jumper going. And that one's no good, so two in a row. Just can't find the range. Wide open three here for Winnipeg. Cougars lost their man in transition. And a rebound is stripped away from Mikhailov, but it goes off the Cougar player. And it'll stay with Winnipeg. 
Stewart checks out. Luke returns. Good curl there. Nice Good hand. Defense. And that's out of bounds. The Cougars here struggling a bit offensively to try and get something going. Steve Burrows that's is going to want to take a timeout here to talk about it. Steve Burrows is going to talk about that in the timeout. You see coaching staff, little huddle here before the timeout. Wade Huckle, Jamal Williams, and Joel Hunter. It's as we talked about, I mean, they were having success kind of going to the, to the hoop there. But now Winnipeg's really kind of packing the key in, so not as successful with those cuts and things like that. Really, you're going to have to get someone to knock down an outside shot, stretch out that defense. It's going to be one of those things, too, where the Cougars, they have sort of a new combination of guys. Obviously, you're going to look to Matt and Nick Bernard to lead the way, but Matt and Nick kind of played off of um, their teammates a bit. They, they kind of fed off the transition, getting steals, offensive rebounds, making nice cuts, and both have hit just huge timely shots, I mean, specifically threes, you know, to bring the Cougars back to ice games. And it's going to be a little bit different this year because I think Steve Burroughs is going to rely on them to create their own offense and, and kind of carry the offense a bit. We'll see how that shakes out with a lot of these new players, especially a new combination of ball handlers out there for, for Steve Burroughs. Yeah, and especially when you're, you're two guys that are so used, the Cougars had a, almost the same starting lineup for many, many years. So even for those guys, like you said, to get used to playing with, with other guys, right? Knowing where they're going to be. Great defense by Mikhailov to deny Bernard and cause the turnover. Can Cam's going to bring it up on Hillis. And a good anticipation, as I mentioned, Bernard. Great on defense. And that's a great finish by Nick. over top of Bernard and scores. So Megan Pickton, if you don't know, was a <laughs> force in the post. She loves post play. And Zach Hill is the turnover there. You just you get so excited <laughs> I get when really excited. a player has his back to the or her back to the basket <laughs> and is just like, get out of my way. I'm turning, I'm dropping the shoulder, I'm laying it in. You can watch that all day. It is. It's 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 just so funny because for the longest time, it it seems like this five-out offense has kind of taken over the game, right? Like yeah. you, you have those stretch players and everything and kind of started when I finished playing, the four stretch out fence, having one in, everything like that. So when there is a truly really technical back to the basket player, like we're seeing right now with Mikhailov, I mean, it's hard to guard. It opens everything up for your, for your guards around you. I mean, I just find it such a huge asset and kind of changes the game, which is, a little obvious to me with the 14 points that he's sitting on. And, and, it, and if now you have, you know, Luke who's in there who had the last one. And as you mentioned, not only I think does it open up the, the lanes for the rest of the team, but it's something that the defense isn't necessarily used to, having to guard someone, their back to the basket, you know, banging in there, as they're used to practicing and playing against, you know, a spread offense, let's say. Mm -hmm. Well, it can be an advantage if you have a player or a couple players down there as Winnipeg does, and they're having a, a huge advantage inside on the Cougars. That pass is telegraphed by Edwards, and Luke's going to go in and lay it in. So Luke with five. Quick points here. Edwards with a three, and that is pure. And the Cougars needed that. It was up to 14, now down to 11. 14 is the largest lead the Westmen have had tonight especially after making a turnover like Edwards did there in the backcourt to come back and hit a three. It, it, I don't want to say it evens it out, but it really does even it out a little bit. Well, 
26 points in the paint for Winnipeg. And three at the foul line. Hills called for the foul. And that'll be Mikhailov at the line. And with 5.20 to go here, Mikhailov's got a fairly loud 15. Hit that 16 points already. Yikes. Forty-two twenty-nine. Edwards wants another one. Hit the last one. That is pure. Jalen Edwards for three. Hits a couple in a row here. Those are two big buckets for Steve Burrow's team. And two for two from that three-point line, as you mentioned. So at least on Jalen Edwards, the Winnipeg Westman are going to have to really contest at that three-point line and beyond that three-point line. Cruz with a steal, and Edwards gets that tipped away. Winnipeg will make him pay for it. And the Cougars' turnover leads to a basket by Thomas. It's that telegraph pass, like you mentioned on the first one, too. The crossover by Prasad gets to his spot and hits the jumper. And he definitely likes it in that high post, high elbow area. Big three. Moran hits the three. Nice pass by Hillis. That puts Westman shooting over 50% from the three point line, four of seven. Yeah, Winnipeg shooting, shooting the ball really well, 60% from the field. So Me Megan mentioned 57 from three. Unfortunately, 50% from that free throw line, so that's something they'll film on back. Jarl with it. Stewart, Thomas in the corner, looks down low to Mikhailov. Call three in the key there, I believe. Three in the key. In three in the keys, got, it's more like nine in the key because, <laughs> and this is not a shot at the officials because they, they do a phenomenal job. Just kind of the way the game's played now well, is just you're not really watching for it because the guy runs down the floor or gal. They sit in the key and you're not really watching for it. And that's going to be a block on Mikhailov. And so you can get away with it. As soon as you get the ball, it's almost like the count starts. And if yeah. you don't make a move, you don't shoot the ball, that's when it gets called, Yeah, which I think is fine. Yeah, they're not doing anything in the key right in that second. Yeah. So you kind of understand the leniency that the referees have with it. I just think it's because our key looks so nice now that they're going to call it get out of there. We can't resurface it again next year. Yeah, it's true. Bernard free throw line shooting two. Matt makes the first and the second. So the Cougars still trailing by 11 here. Offensively, it's been a decent half for Regina, but defensively, for sure, knowing Steve Burroughs, they've given up too many. And there's still three and a half to go here. Great pass. Jaro goes baseline. Good look inside. Winnipeg really finding the open man well. And that's going to be a foul in the backcourt. I think it's going to be on Stewart. Yeah, the Western really know where their players are. They're in the right spots. Everyone's kind of spaced out really well. No two players are kind of standing next to each other on those baseline drives. Sometimes we see that on the offside, the guards kind of hanging out side by side, but Westman spacing the floor really, really well, making the Cougars kind of recover defense a little bit harder. McCalla into the game, number four for Winnipeg. Gamba. Back out there, great drive, just can't get the finish to go. Gordo hits the deck, two on one developing here. And a good finish and again, a, another basket from inside the paint for Winnipeg. Such a smart pass too. You saw Mikhailov just on the shorter player, just throw it up instead of trying to play that two on one game. Harold open for three, that one rolls out and Winnipeg has the rebound through Stewart. 2.30 to go here. Mikhailov, left-hand finish. 
And he is a beast inside, folks. Oh, and so patient, too. Open three, Arinze. That's short. And they call foul on Harold, I believe. A reach in. That'll be the fourth team foul on Regina. Next one, they'll have Winnipeg shooting bonus. And Regina's going to string a couple stops together here, Megan. It's going to get stretched up by Winnipeg, already up to 15. 51 36. 205 to play here in half number one. Preseason action from the University of Regina. And Stewart shuffled it. A turnover. And the Cougars needed that stop. Big Mather into the game for Regina number eight. Go with a high set here for the Cougars. Harold. Lorenze. Too much in the same area of the court. Mather for three. Tries to bail his team out. Can't get it to go. That's tapped out by Bernard. And the Cougars had trouble, as you mentioned, Megan, just sitting on the left side of the floor above the three-point line. It's almost as if there was like a little two by two box kind yeah. of drawn in that area and the ball didn't leave it. Stewart with it, watched by Harold. That's too strong off the glass. Well, a nice rebound there for Luke. Kala for three. That's just too strong off the back rim. And the Cougars in transition, Mather with it. He Burrows wants his team to move the ball here. Kamba to Harold, three on the way. Good, Luke Harold. That's good. The Cougars need to see a few more fall like that from the outside. Good job by Luke Harold. His first action as a Cougar. Two for three from three. That's short on the step back. McCalla does save it. Luke over the shoulder, can't get it to go. Campbell with the rebound. Hold for the last shot. The Cougars wanted to hold for the last shot, but they turn it over. And see if Westman can make them pay. Gordo, good on the rebound. The Cougars give up the offensive rebound. And your score at half is 53-39 for the University of Winnipeg Westman. We'll be back with the second half in 15 minutes. Stay with us. Whether you want to change the world or nurture your own neighborhood, start here. With a diverse mix of people, cultures, and ideas, our campus is a place of inclusion. Located in the heart of the city. A place where there's always something going on. a place where your professors will get to know you by name. That's the beauty of a small campus community. Connect with open-minded learners, caring professors, and brilliant researchers. 
inspire, and be inspired by others who share your passion to do something exceptional. Thrive in a supportive and diverse learning environment where your success is celebrated. Create a cinematic masterpiece. Launch a successful startup. Shape young minds. Or find a cure. You're determined to achieve your potential. And we're determined to help you do it. Welcome to the University of Winnipeg. We can't wait to meet you. It's important because feelings that we have are generally tend to be things that we keep inside of our bodies and being able to express that feeling to someone else may help them identify potential issues. Seeing it in real time being used by people has been an amazing experience and people are engaging with it and see value in it and that makes me feel really good. I chose to take online summer courses because they really worked around my schedule when I was working full-time in the co-op program. I can go log on to the course anytime I want. I don't have to be there at a specific time, so I can watch my lecture anytime during my day that I feel like it. I was able to take some classes that maybe I wouldn't have taken if I was taking them in person. With summer classes, I've been able to work, travel, and study at the same time. We may play different sports, but we all have the same mindset. Passion, commitment, hard work, and a love for the game. We are U of R athletes. And you know we play. The ESIM program is an international sport marketing industry class in Madrid, Spain. So uh, 15 of us from U of R got to go to Madrid, Spain for 10 days and do this program. Studying abroad was everything I expected it to be. It was interesting, meaningful, and of course educational. For me, sport management is all about networking and making connections, and the class on international sport marketing just did that. And I now have the knowledge of international sport marketing and the connections to utilize in my future. My experience was a 10 out of 10. It was lots of fun. I'm a human kinetics student, so it's a lot of anatomy and physiology, but it was just nice to learn about my degree in a different country. I would tell someone interested in studying abroad simply to just do it. I now have connections internationally 
from not just Spain, but people from Finland, Germany, Austria, you name it. I would say don't think about it twice and just hop on because it's a really good experience and you never know what you can get out of it. The Sport and Recreational Management program at the University of Regina is a four-year bachelor's degree. It's a mixture of kinesiology and business classes with a sport management focus. The Sport and Record Management program was something that was excellent for myself. Policy management, sport law, uh, program development. The classes themselves prepared myself for being where I'm at. As a student, my experience has been incredibly positive with the program. I think what makes the Sport and Rec Management program and the field so interesting is that there's so many opportunities. You can go the professional uh, route, the college athletics route, you can go the community recreation programming, you can go university recreation programming. I've been able to grow the game within the province. I get to work in sport every day. That is the best thing that you can ever do. You really get to tailor this program to your interests as an individual. It really challenged me to be a better person and a better professional. And it's just been the best thing I've ever done. When you grew up playing the sport and then you get a chance to give back and develop it, it's so rewarding in that sense. That brings me the most joy in, in coming to work every day. Whether you want to change the world or nurture your own neighborhood, start here. With a diverse mix of people, cultures, and ideas, our campus is a place of inclusion, located in the heart of the city. A place where there's always something going on. A place where your professors will get to know you by name. That's the beauty of a small campus community. Connect with open-minded learners, caring professors, and brilliant researchers. Inspire and be inspired by others who share your passion to do something exceptional. Thrive in a supportive and diverse learning environment where your success is celebrated. Create a cinematic masterpiece. Launch a successful startup. Shape young minds. Or find a cure. You're determined to achieve your potential. And we're determined to help you do it. Welcome to the University of Winnipeg. We can't wait to meet you.
It's important because feelings that we have are generally tend to be things that we keep inside of our bodies and being able to express that feeling to someone else may help them identify potential issues. Seeing it in real time being used by people has been an amazing experience and people are engaging with it and see value in it and that makes me feel really good. I chose to take online summer courses because they really worked around my schedule when I was working full-time in the co-op program. I can go log on to the course anytime I want. I don't have to be there at a specific time, so I can watch my lecture anytime during my day that I feel like it. I was able to take some classes that maybe I wouldn't have taken if I was taking them in person. With summer classes, I've been able to work, travel, and study at the same time. Well, and welcome back to the University of Regina. Second half about to start. We're about 30 seconds away from second half action as we get a look at the Cougar sideline. Adam Hunter alongside me, Megan Picton, our Cougar basketball crew bringing you this broadcast tonight. And we're happy you're with us. Preseason action from the University of Regina. And it's the visiting Westmen who are the story in the first half, Megan. 53 points. And Mikhail Mikhailov is going off. See what I did there? Tonight with, <laughs> that's bad, 18 <laughs> points on 8 of 12 shooting mm. in 15 minutes. And my guess is at halftime, Steve Burrows and his coaching staff looked at this box score and what, what do you think they said to their team? Mm, stop giving up so many points in the paint to number 14. Play more defense. No? I think you're probably right. Okay. And <laughs> we'll get your lineup set in one second here. What did you think of the overall performance from, from both teams in the first half? I thought the Westman were pretty impressive. Like you said, Mikhailov just really kind of dominated the paint. Winnipeg scored 34 points in the paint, so it took it to their advantage, but also shot well from the outside. Four of eight from that three-point line. So, so did a good job there. And one from Matty Bernard. And the Cougars, with a design play, go right into Bernard in the post, get the bucket and the foul. And that's a great job by Bernard to draw the foul there. It's the first team foul on Winnipeg. And right, just like that, the Cougars start off with a three-point play and cut it to 11. That definitely helps the cause. Good drawn-up play, like you mentioned, from the coaching staff. He's so patient. Mikhailov. I bet you Jamal Williams is like, yeah, he's not happy he's doing it, going to work, but he's like, yeah, that's respect for that fellow post player with the array of moves as Gordo in the tra in transition. Persad tries to change the shot and look who's there to finish it <laughs> off, Mikhailov. These teams going back and forth down the floor. Bernard finishes. Let's see if one team can start stop the other in transition. Great pace to this one to start the second half. Like I mentioned, definitely doesn't feel like a preseason game, but Mikhailov really starting off this second half where he finished the first. Impressive play from the big man. Campbell with it. Right hand dribble. Finds Bernard. That's no good. Campbell with a rebound goes up. And finishes with the right hand. 57-46 Winnipeg. It's nice when your, your one-two guard there gets the rebound on the inside with the, the soft finish. Collier is going to be called for the push there. 
So three on Collier. And Stewart will check out. Ryan Luke returns for Winnipeg. See if Winnipeg can get a bucket here off the inbound. Mikhailov gets the roll, again. waits inside, and again, he cannot be stopped. Mikhailov with six quick ones here in the second half, and the Cougars trail by 13. Versad tries to go off the dribble. Bernard, and that's stolen. And here come the Westmen. And a nice finish in transition, Malachi Alexander. It's a tough pass, always going from the baseline to the straight to the top of the key because it's an easy pick off and run out. There's no real help side to kind of help the transition piece. And again, just the turnovers. Collier there went baseline, got himself caught in the air and just threw it to no one. Cougars called the offensive foul. Cougars now also with 12 turnovers in the game. And Winnipeg with 19 points off turnovers. Mikhailov for three. That's no good. Well, the only thing he's done wrong tonight. Cougars in transition. Persaud thought about it, finds Bernard. Now Matt Bernard with it. Let's see if the Cougars can get another stop here on the defensive end. Really playing a two-man game here. Why not give it to Mikhailov again? That one didn't fall, but still really good patience to turn his body. Mikhailov's fun to watch, you guys. I'm just <laughs> going to say that. 24 points already. Cougars have had no answer for him. Yeah, 11 of 17 from the field. Marinin with the foul. Not sure what Burroughs is asking for here. Kamet inbound, finds Prasad behind the Collier screen. Trying to set up his defender. <laughs> Array of moves and a silky smooth jump shot. Prasad knocks it down. That's been his office tonight. Cougars trail by 15, 6.20 to go here. And now a steal for Prasad. Hit ahead to Kamba and Gordo there nice with save. the hustle play and steal. Definitely that mid-range play kind of player for the Cougars. The Cougars need that. Mm -hmm. Again, quick hands too. Almost got that one. See five, five, sorry, Megan, 545 nope. to go here. Third quarter, 63-50. Cougars have had no answer for Mikhail Mikhailov, who they'll be thrilled to know is now out of the game. Alexander. The Stewart inside to Luke. Good extra pass, and the Cougars clamp down and get that. Shot clock violation. Turnover. That's a good stop from the Cougars, so see if they can capitalize on it here on the offensive end. Prasad again. 
And a nice finish <laughs> by Bernard flying in as Matt knocks it in. Uh, Matt's got 12 now. Back the other way. Westman go right to the, uh, their office, which is about three feet from the basket and finish. Nick to the basket, can't get it to go. Hits the deck and now numbers for Winnipeg. Moranin, Stewart, Jaro. Westman moved from side to side. Goes back inside to Stewart. Turnaround short, but Luke gets the offensive rebound and lays it in. That was nice post defense as well from Bernard there, not really giving up any ground, but unfortunate to give up the offensive rebound. That's 48 pain points now for Winnipeg, 67 total. And Kamba draws the foul on the drive. The shot was blocked, but he'll shoot two. 13 foul on Winnipeg. And Steve Burrows will get Luke Harold and Jalen Edwards eventually back in there. Edwards in for the shooter. As Mikhailov will come back, back in here for Winnipeg. Jaro called for the foul. Kamba too strong on the free throw. You look at the drives from the Cougars and from that top of the key, someone coming down, but no real movement by the other four players kind of staying to the outside a little bit compared to the Westman who in there is a, a drive. I mean, they've got everyone kind of moving around the ball. So Kamba misses the free throw. Cougars have been good from the line tonight, but two misses there. That goes inside to Thomas, wants to go on Orenze. Up and under is no good. Orenze will have the rebound stolen from on Mikhailov, and there he is again, folks. <laughs> Just giving the Cougars nightmares inside. Eighth rebound, I believe, if they credit it as rebound. Yep, yeah, they do. Kailov now with 26 points. He knocks down two free throws. Cougars trail by 17. Edwards, elbow jump shot, strong. And Alexander hustles and gets it. Moran and out, watched by Bernard. It goes inside to Mikhailov. Kicks open three on the way. No good. That shot made possible by a collapsing defense. I mean, do you think the Cougars are happy they just didn't see Mikhailov put it up there? Well, they definitely gave him attention. Still some scorers. We talked about Mikhailov a lot. He's got those 26 points, but you've got Gordo with 10, Jaro with 8, Stewart 3, Marinan 7. So you still got some guys here contributing. And Stewart finishes it off inside. Another paint bucket. Nice intensity too from Winnipeg. Benches into it. Why wouldn't they be? They're up by 19. Prasad off the dribble. Short. And a tie up. Westman will get it on the arrow. 71-52, Winnipeg. 2.52 to play here in quarter number three. Around and no good. Luke Harold, and that'll be a turnover. <laughs> oh, nice. Alexander was all over that. Mikhailov can't get it to go. And a foul on the rebound. It's going to go against Orenze. 
That's three on him. And the Westman will be inbounding from underneath. We get a couple of substitutions in the game for Winnipeg as Mensah returns. Along with Gordo. And Can Can. Nice crossover by Gordo. And a nice soft touch finishes it off. And again, just really killing the Cougars inside or the Westman. So that's saying if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Three on the way. That's no good. Mikhailov has it. Working on a double double here. I think he just got it as well. 26 and 10 for the big map. Gordo hit the last one, kicks it, and the three is good. And everyone for Winnipeg is firing and finishing. Canem for three. Seventy-six fifty-two is when it Winnipeg has blown it open here. Shooting five of twelve from that three-point line. Fifty-two percent overall from the field. This is one of my favorite statistics. I always look at it as the assists on teams. So for Winnipeg, your assist to turnover ratio, there are thirteen assists, twelve turnovers. Or sorry. 13 assists, 7 turnovers. For the Cougars, 7 assists, 15 turnovers. There you go. You're all over it tonight. Not you're not in preseason form. You're in you're in regular season form. You're like you're like early December form right I've now. I've actually I've been thinking about that exact thing I was going to say for about 2 quarters. Hey, don't reveal your secrets. Well. The process doesn't matter. It's <laughs> I got there. Yep. But I mean, it is. You look at it. 15 turnovers, and we're not even. We're two minutes left. One, 143 left in the third quarter. That's a lot of turnovers, especially when you're trying to come back from a deficit. Well, 143 to go here, as Megan mentioned. 76-52. And a Cougars trail. Campbell with it. Can Cam's all over him. Takes the ball from Arenze, finds Edwards, wants to go on Alexander, does, leaves it short. Big offensive rebound by Arenze, can't get it to go. And Mensa tracks it down. Good defensive pressure there from the Cougars. Gordo. And a steal for Mather, good hands there. Kamba head to Rinze. It's one play, place where the Cougars have turned it over and just not been quite as sharp as they need to be as in transition, that kind of hit ahead pass. Gotta get the ball in here. Edwards with the finish. Good switches on that play there by the Cougars. Three is missed, but Mensa tracks down the rebound. That three is missed by Kankin. We have Edwards pull down the board. Mather in transition here. Puts his head down. Step through. And they're going to call travel. Twenty-five seconds to play here. Second and a half. Different shot clock, game clock. Nice pass inside. Mensa blocked. Gets his own rebound.
I mean, if we're being technical here, there should be a second left on the clock. <laughs> but it's the no, Cougars don't care, and neither the Westman, and we shouldn't either. 76-54, <laughs> Winnipeg leads it after three quarters. And Megan, I mean, the Cougars uh, in that quarter were outscored 23 to 14. 15, excuse me. And you can't really do that when you're already trailing. You have to make up that halftime deficit, which was 14 points. Now I'll trail by 22. And I, we were talking about it at halftime. The Cougars have sort of been playing everyone, not so much in the second half, but in the first half. Steve Burroughs had played a lot of players. Uh, I can just count here. 13 players. And so that's going to, I think, obviously, lead to some scattered play, some mistakes, some turnovers, some miscommunication problems. But after all that, you know, they have made some good plays, but just been Winnipeg has just been too much for the Cougars, specifically in the paint and on the second chance points. Yeah, absolutely. And, and we mentioned kind of the turnovers already. I mean, in the first half, Cougars are sitting with nine turnovers. Not bad, not great, but not bad. They had seven turnovers alone in that third quarter. So, and as you mentioned, it's the turnovers where it's throwing it in a fast break in a situation where there is no fast break, if that makes sense. They're throwing it up to someone, but there's three defensive players already back for Winnipeg. There's no need to throw that pass. Um, so just mistakes kind of like that, that Winnipeg is, is forcing the Cougars into these turnovers. And as you mentioned it, I mean, the points in the paint as well. I mean, 52 points in the paint for Winnipeg. That is huge. Yeah, points up turnovers 23 to 8 for Winnipeg. Megan mentioned points in the paint is 52 to 30. Second chance points is 14 to 4. And those are all those hustle plays, uh, not being able to, to, to kind of disrupt Winnipeg inside. And then Winnipeg now, just with that last basket by the Cougars, that stopped a 13-0 scoring run uh, by Winnipeg, kind of to blow this one open a bit. So Cougars did stop that run, but Winnipeg did a lot of damage in the last minute or so. Mm -hmm. Last couple of minutes of that third quarter, Cougars trying to respond here. Jalen Edwards with it to Ben Camba inside to Orenze. And that's a turnover. Now 17 on the game. Yeah, Winnipeg, as you mentioned, done a better job of taking care of it. At the shot clock buzzer, Cougars get the rebound, and Lorenze will bring it up for Regina. Campbell with it. Nice turnaround, just can't find the range on the shot. The Cougars so far have been playing a lot between those elbows. We haven't really seen the ball in this half go, go past the elbows on offense. Mens up over Lorenze. Luke Harrell pulls it down. Finds Edwards. Edwards in transition, one on one. Goes glass, can't get it to go. Good take, though. Great take, but four of his teammates are standing on the other side of half. That's one where you need some guys following through. Corner three. Good. And when it rains, it pours, and it is raining <laughs> for the Westman right now. For Alexander to even keep his feet in bound there on that one as well was impressive. And that was Noah Cancam from three. He's got another. Oh, he's made two. Alberto Gordo's been a bit of the backup point guard here for, even though he started the game, secondary ball handler as Mensa hits one, and Winnipeg continues to cook from the perimeter. Uh, shooting over 50% on the evening. Luke Harold. It's up a corner three. That's no good. And after a 
13-0 run. Winnipeg now on a 5-0 run to start this quarter. Gordo. Winnipeg just getting anywhere they want right now. And the offensive rebound for Gordo. Again, like you mentioned, no resistance, no real push here from the Cougars. Tough step back, that's short. And another offensive rebound here. And Winnipeg will reset with 14. Now eight to shoot. Nice cut by Mensa, good block by Regina. And a shot clock violation. Good defense in there from Mathero as well. So Kenny uh, Ackerman and Zach Hillis will return for Regina. Moranin's in for Winnipeg. Also back out there, Romel McCalla. Wearing number four, Manuel Thomas out there. And Mikhailov returning to the game to go with Stewart for the Westman Five. Campbell remains in the game with Edwards. Ackerman in the high post, finds Zach Hillis. Swings to Edwards. Shot fake, gets in the lane. Out to Camba, three on the way. And he stepped out. Mismatch on the inside there, Winnipeg. Just couldn't get the ball into Stewart. Nice uh, pass. Kylov finds Thomas. And Thomas will shoot two. First foul of the quarter on either team. So Edwards out into the game for the Cougars. Is number six, Dakota McBride Marine. It's one of two Cougars who are dressed, not checked into the game yet. We still haven't seen first-year player Luke Huddlestone. Ackerman with the rebound. Kamba. And he goes right to the basket, but they call the foul on the floor. Before the shot attempt, it's going to go against McCalla. I think he's calling it shooting. Well, they would say Kamba was in his step, so... He'll take the two free throws. First on McCalla, first on the Westman of the quarter. Gamba now 0 of 3 from the free throw line, looking for his first make from there. Cougars have been pretty good from the foul line. And Ben does hit the second. A little 16 point. 26 point, excuse me, preseason lead for Winnipeg with six minutes to play here. And the first preseason action in Regina for, Regina, for the Regina Cougars. And McCalla gets to the basket. Ackerman pulls it down. He's fouled on the rebound. The Cougars, as I mentioned, Luke Huddlestone is the lone dress player not to check in. He's now in there for Regina, number 14. Like Brad Marine will handle for the Cougars up top. Nice cross over there, good pass inside of Zach Hillis. He can't control it, and it's going to stay with the Cougars. Let's see what the Cougars can get going here. Offensively with this, this crew out. McMurray Marine goes to the basket, left hand no good. Good hustle by Huddlestone. <laughs> but he was stepped, had stepped out of bounds. So it's Kenny, Huddlestone, Ackerman, McBride Marine and Hillis.
Nice look inside. Good, no look. You can get that one on the charge there, stepping in. They called Thomas on the charge. It's really nice ball moving though, isn't yes. it, from Winnipeg when you're watching. Yeah, Winnipeg's been slick with the rock tonight. Charles Goosen is into the game for Winnipeg. He had that pass from Thomas, which would have been a bucket, but the turnover negated that. Crossover is no good, and Goosen gets the rebound. Moranin, nice look inside to Luke, who can't get it to go. And it's McBride Marine with the rebound. A step back. Hillis drives baseline, loses the ball. Another Cougar turnover. Cross over there, and Goosen goes reverse. Can't get it to go Ackerman with the board. Zach Hillis, McKenney. Huddlestone for three, <laughs> and he was ready for it. Luke Huddlestone, his first bucket. All right. Tough watching for that long. You're watching for almost <laughs> the entire game. You get on for the last five minutes. He's ready to shoot and he buries it. Well, this is what those minutes are for, right? When you you get the opportunity to kind of show your coaches what you can do. Yeah, we, saw, yeah, we saw it in the women's game with Taylor Gottsley who got up there and mm -hmm. was playing like she'd played the whole game. Instant offense, so. We had a, not five players on the floor here for Winnipeg, but now we do. And checking in for the first time is Number one, Isaiah Alexander. Number 11, excuse me. Zach Hillis to the basket, and Zach goes to the rack for two. Quick, strong take there from Zach Hillis. Nice pass into Alexander. And Isaiah just freshly into the game scores, so. Players who are getting their first shot, making shots right now. And Zach Hillis looks for the two, can't get it to go from the elbow. 2.50 to go. Cougars trail by 23. Mensa on Hillis. Wants to go to work here. Goes over top, can't get it to go. Good hustle play and finish there from Can Cam. That's their team 40, that's their 46th rebound. Cougars sitting at 31. So dominating the boards as well. Huddlestone to the basket. He's gonna draw the foul on the drive. Cougars not quite in bonus yet. And a Lodi with two. Nice fake off that three point line. Jaro with it. Let's so go to the basket. Tough finish to the left. Can't get it to go. Kenny with the rebound. So if he goes and attacks again, a shifty player. Nice floater inside, and he gets the roll. McBride Marine with the rebound. Oh, sorry, the steal. Huddlestone. Good job, and go. Oof, came down hard on that arm. He's going to jump right back up. So good aggressiveness from a first year player. Cougar's gonna go with a smaller lineup here. For the last 128. The cuddlestone there. 
the free throw line, misses the first one. Kind of knew it instantly. 85-64, Winnipeg leading. They've been in control for most of this one. It's about halfway through the first quarter. They blew it open in the third and haven't looked back. Now a 20-point lead. Uh, tough turnover there for Winnipeg. That's one where you just lost focus a little bit. And Zach goes to the basket. So Hillis will shoot two. Cougar is going to be in bonus here for the final 116. And a missed three throw for Hillis. Cougar is now 11 of 18 from the free throw line. Hillis goes 0 for 2. Foul was on Isaiah Alexander, his first of the game. Goosen with Huddlestone on him goes over top. The smaller player oh. and a nice crash. And then once again, a second chance point, offensive rebound, and a bucket inside by Winnipeg. Yeah, it was just a matter of no one putting a body on anyone to box them out, and Winnipeg taking advantage. Look inside to Hillis. Goes over top. Just can't finish, but a good look by Zach. Steal here from Kenny, <laughs> and one. So a good minutes here. Lodi will shoot shoot one. Drango for the three point play. Nine points, I believe, on the night. Ten minutes of play. There's a bucket there, mate. Me with a nice crossover, gets to the basket, blocked <laughs> by Goosen. Jaro the other way. Alexander gets fouled. I think he'll shoot two. Isaiah Alexander has been active. Just got into the game late, late on here. For the first time into the game for Winnipeg is number eight, Nico Longarella. Longarella, another Spanish player from Madrid, so three on the roster. Mikhailov, Gordo, and Longarella. And Huddlestone go back to the free throw line here. Trying to add to his total. Pretty dismal free throw shooting here from both teams. Cougars 12 of 21, Winnipeg 7 of 16. Well, Huddlestone makes one of two. And he has five points in six minutes of play. And that'll do it. Cougars are going to suffer a 20-point defeat, 89-69. An impressive win for the visiting Winnipeg Westman and Coach Mike Rainbow coming here and really dominate the paint, dominate the rebounding and the second chance points. And they take care of the ball. And the Cougars are going to drop their first preseason game here in this home tournament at the University of Virginia. Any final thoughts, Megan? I thought Winnipeg was really impressive coming in here the way they played and can't wait to see when Michael Off becomes player of the week every week for Winnipeg. Uh, he's impressive. <laughs> impressive uh, performance by him with 26 points and 11 rebounds. An impressive performance by the Westman. Reminder, games all day starting tomorrow afternoon here at the University of Virginia. So if you're in the area, come on down. For Megan Pickton, I'm Adam Hunter on a thing card crew in the truck, on the camps. It's our pleasure to bring you the game this evening. We look forward to a great season of Cougar basketball here at the University of Virginia. Thanks for watching. Good night.